that child has reached within five centimeters of their maximum adult height. So by the time the period starts, the growth spurt's almost over. So young girls who get their periods very early, let's just say, or get their breast blood development very early, who are shorter than all, taller than all their classmates then, because they already went through their growth spurt, are gonna be the shortest people in the high school. And that can actually be prevented by preventing the start of the hormone changes that go on with puberty. And we're gonna talk about that um, a little bit. As far as late, when's it too late to get a period? Sometime, if, if your daughter has not had a period by the age of 15, I think it's really time to go seek help for that. Talking about constitutional delay, which is getting your menstrual period too late, or precocious puberty, which is getting your menstrual period too early, is a whole other presentation, but those are things that people need to be aware of. As far as beginning of the menstrual or reproduction cycle, with the start of the menstrual period, girl, young girls have started to release an egg. And that means they're reproductively capable, but they're not really reproductively fit. Let's talk about that a little bit. Teenagers to achieve pregnancy have a lot of pregnancy complications. They usually get through it because they're young, but they don't get through it as well as a 20-something girl. So I think it's important to, for, for women, young girls, to understand, yes, they can have a baby, but it's, their body's really not ready for that yet. And sometime about 16 to 20, probably the body's really, really ready. I, I put this, this uh, uh, in your packet, too, but the, this master gland, it's called the hypothalamus pituitary axis. The brain lives up here, your brain is very big, and the brain sends signals to this gland here, and that is what triggers the start of some of the changes that lead girls to transition into an adolescent. And so there's a hormone called gonadotropin releasing hormone that starts to be released by the hypothalamus, and that gonadotropin releasing hormone feeds to the pituitary. The pituitary is right behind your eyes, and it is the master gland. It drives not only estrogen production, but it drives thyroid hormone production, it drives stress hormone production, it drives your salt balance production. So this pituitary gland is essential to all of us walking, living, and breathing. A man's pituitary gland looks pretty much like a woman's pituitary gland, it's just the effect of the hormones are different on the, as far as the capacity. So what does this pituitary gland secrete? Two hormones, follicle stimulating hormone, so the ovary has follicles that contain eggs, and luteinizing hormone, which is the hormone that actually is meant to support a pregnancy and supports the menstrual cycle. So women who are making enough follicle stimulating hormone or luteinizing hormone will have irregular menstrual cycles. And not every young woman transitions easily into regular menstrual cycles, and it's something that, that if you don't, sometimes it is an error at the level of from the head up. So it's, when we think about reproductive endocrinology, we break the body up into compartments. And really, we talk about stages, so we have the stages of, of a woman's lifespan, but the compartments are the hypothalamus pituitary, the ovaries, which are the glands that secrete estrogen and progesterone, and then there's the uterus, which is the end organ. And those three compartments can all work separately, can cause dysfunction or they can work together and, and lead to a healthy reproductive um, cycle. Moving on, I think the ovary is something that uh, nobody, most young women don't know where it is. When you go to the gynecologist and they do a bimanual exam and feel on the inside, they have no idea what the doctor's feeling for. And, uh, but this is actually the, the gland that leads to the transition from being a child into a reproductively aged woman uh, and stops working at the time of menopause. So this ovary, which is about the size of, of a large Spanish olive, is the best I can do. I don't know if anyone has any other fruit analogy, but almond. no, it's bigger than an almond. In a young woman, it's, it's bigger than an almond. It's a fancy egg sac, and remember these 350,000 eggs that are present at the time of birth are all in here. 
and they're in different stages. They're in these really small primordial stages, primary stages, and then of these follicles that are going to ovulate and release an egg are the follicles that are actually making estrogen. After ovulation, these follicles that released an egg starts to secrete progesterone. And that progesterone is there to support an early pregnancy if it happens. And then, really the great mystery is what brings on the menstrual cycle? I mean, I think if I ask many women, it's a hard answer, right? But really, what brings on the menstrual cycle is your hypothalamus has driven the ovary to produce estrogen, release an egg. That egg has come out, that same follicle now is producing progesterone. If a fetus doesn't form in the uterus and some mess and messages back to this ovary now, both of these hormone levels fall to zero, you have a menstrual period. So it's actually the menstrual, the start of the menstrual cycle is the absence of these reproductive hormones. Now, women talk about PMS. Well, premenstrual syndrome doesn't happen for everybody, and it's worse in some women, not so bad in others. But if you think about it, as women, you run off of estrogen and progesterone. Those are, those are your two necessary hormones to keep working, right? So right before you get your period, those hormones are plummeting, and they go to zero. And women are, are psychologically adapted to work off of those hormones. So when those hormones start to fall, some women who are sensitive to those changes notice the changes. The other things that, that are noticeable are some changes in breast tenderness, a feeling of difference and different loading it and swelling in the pelvis. All those are because these two key hormones that make women, women, fall. So the human ovary is, is really an amazing structure. If you think about it, there's no place where you can store something for 35 years and then have it come out, work, and make a baby. So the reality is, is that we, there's, we can't mimic this, but this ovary is nurturing and holding these immature eggs until the time comes for them to ovulate. And one of the questions I always get from patients who are, let's say, pursuing fertility therapy, we, when we bring up multiple eggs, is, is aren't you using up my eggs? The reality is, is that these primordial follicles are predetermined for when they're going to come up. So somehow in your body, when you were born with those 350,000 primordial eggs, the egg that was going to ovulate when you're 42 has already been defined versus the egg you were going to ovulate when you were 25. And we don't understand that at all. So, so the functions within this, this human ovary are really a mystery, and it's part of the mystery of reproduction. And it's part of really what makes women very, very unique and special in, in, the, in our human family. Any questions about the ovary before I go on? Because I think it's something that, that a lot of women don't actually ever think about or talk about. But this is really the important part of what makes everything else happen. So if we move on to the next compartment, we have the uterus. So ladies, I'm on page nine in that if you want to flip through. So the uterus is also known as the womb. The uterus is what everybody feels when they have cramping. That's what contracts. The uterus is a big muscle, all right? The uterus has a very special inner lining called the endometrium. And it's that endometrium that thickens in the context of estrogen secreted from the ovary, changes to allow an, an embryo to implant, and then puts up, quote unquote, a force field to allow women to carry a foreign entity within their body for nine months without rejecting it. So this endometrium, this very special part of the part of the, the uterus, the inner line in the uterus, is all